Now, finally this week, we've seen unprecedented levels of technological innovation in the past decade. Think iPhones, Google Maps, Siri, Alexa, and others. Now, says Alan van der Molen, president of We Communications, consumers are no longer wowed by gimmicks and, in fact, are suffering from what he terms innovation fatigue. A recent study by We International also shows growing fear around data security and ethics. Innovation doesn't necessarily cut it these days, I guess, because everyone is focused and obsessed with innovation. What's the point that we're making here? There's some innovation fatigue. I think the word itself has lost its sheen, right? That said, there is still tremendous demand for innovation. I think marketers, however, have to think about what that innovation means. Is it innovation in the product offering? Is it innovation in the distribution of the product? Where is the innovation and how is that going to satisfy or not the consumer's thirst for innovation? This is what frightens me. 84% of those people that marketers are trying to reach are concerned that their data is not secure. So to what extent then has that become a hindrance? Uh, look, I, I think it's a massive issue. Our respondents broadly are saying this, that they demand innovation, they want innovation, they're thirsty for innovation. However, they want innovation with ethics and with responsibility. They don't want innovation for innovation's sake. In fact, our respondents are saying, hey, look, we want you to innovate so we can have better, more quick access to products and services. We want you to innovate so we can do more things in less time. We want you to innovate so we can have a better quality of life as it relates to particular categories of products. However, we are fearful that our data is being breached. We are fearful that we may lose our jobs because of machine learning and artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. We are fearful that we may be run over by an autonomously driven vehicle to be a bit absurd. We're worried that our mobile devices are, are listening to us. So we're now holding you brands responsible for the ethical and responsible use of technology. In fact, 97% of our respondents globally say they're holding the brands responsible, not the technologies responsible for its ethical use and implementation. But it seems to me that that's a lose-lose situation because you want the innovation on the one hand, which is predicated on the optimum use of data. On the other hand, data privacy is not guaranteed. So it puts the marketers in, uh, in a real conundrum. Well, I think what it does with marketers now is it asks marketers to take the responsibility for educating their consumers about the risk and reward of opting into sharing data. Because consumers and customers opt into sharing data now, right? GDPR in, in Europe drove that trend that... Often unwittingly, that, though. Well, yeah. look, when was the last yeah. time you read a user's agreement? I've never read a user's well, agreement. Well, correct. So, but you haven't either. So I, I, I do know. <laughs> I do know. And I read it, and I'm like, I'm giving up control of damn near everything yeah. by opting in here. But by not opting in, there's a bigger risk. So that gets into the responsibility that marketers and brands have now to educate their customers about the risk reward and also to start to take the measures to protect their customers. Not to slow down innovation, to innovate, but to do it with a responsible and ethical framework around it. But there's a bottom line imperative as far as marketers are concerned. Education is one thing, but they still want that captive audience. Are they necessarily going to uh, go for the more altruistic way of doing things and to embark on that education process? Or are they simply going to say, we understand the ethics debate as far as this is concerned, but we want you in any way because we want to sell you stuff? Well, there's an ethics debate, but there's also a legal obligation in a lot of countries in the world now to protect protect consumer data. And it goes beyond what the marketers are doing. It also gets into what the marketers are doing on different platforms and making sure they understand the risk reward of the platforms they're working on, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, you name the platform. They also need to understand and put pressure or work with the platform to ensure data privacy and security is happening. The other point that you make, and this is also fairly terrifying, is that 94% of those respondents say, and I quote, they will gladly shame these brands no matter their love for them. So the consumers don't actually care. Yeah, well, what, what consumers... There's no more brand loyalty. I, I think what consumers are saying in this instance is, look, we now have the means at our fingertips to call you out if you behave in a way that's not in line with our expectations of you. And by and large, I think marketers understand this, and that's why now marketers are actually starting to shift from talking at consumers and engaging with consumers with the platforms at their fingertips. But consumers, or sorry, marketers do absolutely need to realize that consumers have no problem 
if they love the product, if they love the service, if they love the brand, they have no problem joining in the shaming, as our survey would say, if a brand steps out of line, does not meet their needs and expectations. So it says to me that brand loyalty is dead. I wouldn't go that far. I would not go that far. I think it says that consumers now have the ability to hold brands accountable in a very public way, and they will do so. So I think it's saying consumers are loyal, but that loyalty has an expectation for how the brand behaves beyond the product, whether that is a customer service issue, whether that is a child labor issue, whether that is a toxic content issue. I think the behaviors that consumers call out transcend the product. And I think that's why when customers are looking at the brand, they look at it in three ways today. First of all, they look at, is the brand delivering the product and service priced for where I can get value from it? So is it doing what it says to do, the what of the brand? The second thing is the how they're doing it. Are they complying with the rules and laws and the expectations broadly of society? So first thing you have is what they do. Second thing is how they do it. The third thing is why they do it, which is the purpose of the brand, right? And consumers are looking at all three of those things. They lean towards functionality, so price of entry is functionality, then legal and moral compliance, and then brand purpose broadly. But you have to tick all three of those boxes today. Marketers and brands have to tick all three of those boxes today. So is brand shaming a thing or just a threat? I mean, is it actually happening? Well, brand shaming, look, happens in our world all the time. Uh, but I think it can also be a quick two-hour shaming because brands now have the opportunity to identify a customer service issue through technology and jump on it when only two or three customers have experienced it, not two or three million customers have experienced it. You also ask the question, Alan, about whether consumers think more rationally these days, given this overhang of responsibility and access to data, or do they have to be more emotionally connected these days to making a purchasing decision? In other words, has the tilt changed in any way? So what we're seeing right now, and I think part of this is driven by economics. We're seeing growth tighten. We're seeing a little bit more pressure on consumers. And I think part of this is a reaction to the noise in the marketplace, the kind of rise of hyperbolic language around things like immigration, around things like Brexit and the United Kingdom. We're seeing the use of hyperbolic language and a tightening of economies, and therefore consumers are retreating to basics. So they're looking for the proof in the brand over the promise of the brand. So for instance, if I'm going to buy a dandruff shampoo, or I'm going to want to make sure that dandruff shampoo does what it says it's going to do, in terms of it works, it has its functionality, that's of greater importance to me today than the emotional promise of the brand is. So right now, consumers in this environment are leaning rationality over emotion. When did that change? Uh, we saw a very strong change in the last 12 months. So from, 20, from September 2017 to September 2018, we saw a marked difference in the increase in consumer expectation for, for the rational, for the functionality over the emotional. Who'd want to be a marketing director these days, Alan? <laughs> well, look, I think that being a marketing director is very tough because I think there's a broad shift to commoditization of categories, right? And I think Amazon has done that as one of the drivers of that. So I think we're seeing a big move to commodity over brand. I think that's going to correct itself because I think brands are going to rise up. They're going to meet the expectations of consumers and they're going to meet their emotional needs in ways that the commodity them themselves can't. So I, I think we're just seeing a bit of an overcorrection at the moment. Well, that's our program for this week. You can find more information on our show on our various social media platforms. Until next time, goodbye to you and thank you for watching.